Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to cover a simpler device that you're going to find throughout the whole entire medical facility. This is the forced air blanket patient heater. Now, this device here is used to maintain body temperature, often for individuals that are incapacitated or have low body mass, like pediatrics. But we also use them for patients in, say, ICUs. So if they're not very mobile, they're not generating very much body heat, and we have to help them. When patients' body heat falls below a certain point, um, they get hypothermia, and hypothermia can be therapeutic depending on certain conditions. Like if you want the body to limit blood flow in certain areas like limbs, they will cool the limbs down, and that will naturally constrict the blood vessels and limit blood flow. And it limits their bleeding and other other various things but anyway we use these devices here to maintain the body heat or increase the body heat so if there is a patient that is hypothermic we can make them hyperthermic with one of these so a normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees or 37 degrees centigrade and some of these guys here can go up to 41 degrees if I remember correctly so that is very hyper thermic. Anyway, let's take a look and see exactly what these devices are. We have a hose which extends to the patient where there is a consumable blanket. Think of it like a trash bag, okay? This trash bag has reservoirs and chambers and as you plug this in, it will inflate those chambers and it forms a thermal blanket. This was quite the ingenious design because the old style was a blanket that was uh, needing to be cleaned. And if you can imagine, uh, the infection hazard of cleaning blankets, and plus, when you clean a blanket, how do you get all the moisture out of it? So when they came out with the disposable blanket system, I think it was Bear Hugger was the original brand. And since then, other companies like Stryker have gotten on board, and they have their own version of a forced air patient heater system. This one here is what my hospital uses. It's called the Mistral Air, and it's got some pluses and minuses, uh, like all of them do. But let's go over it and see exactly what we got going on. As you can see, I have a few of them stacked up all around my shop because they're due for repair. And one of the major things that goes wrong with these guys, as you can see, it has a plastic mounting system and it goes on an IV pole usually. Well, this is also a weak point because it's got this big old honking front end where people like to set things on or that they raise or lower the patient bed and it crushes them, which is why I have a whole bunch of them here because they're getting crushed. Now it is neglect, but nonetheless, it doesn't decrease our burden as a biomed any less. So as a design flaw, it would be better if it was closer to the wall and taller whereas these ones here they made it uh, skinnier and longer and it's got a plastic clamping system so of course the clamp is what's going to break often on the front you have a control panel you can uh, silence your alarms and we have uh, a couple different degrees that we can change it to 32 38 and 43. now remember i said 37 degrees is uh, normal patient temperature so 32 makes them hypothermic and 43 makes them hyperthermic all right so it goes above and below body temperature the tube right here seems to be the Achilles heel of the system because it is a consumable and we can change it out almost all these forced air patient heater systems have a hose that will screw on you can see right there I can unscrew it so it is a consumable and it does compress so um, it's normally not that big of a burden because we normally deal with these systems as a contract if you buy X amount of the disposable blankets then you get free service and sometimes free loaner machines I don't exactly know how this hospital's deal goes down but that is normally how it is you buy X amount of blankets you get the blanket system and repairs for free but regardless it still does create a lot of work for us so let's take a look inside one of these blanket warmers and mind you all these systems might be different a little bit but they're also very very similar so let's take a look 
with my victim right here. So all these systems will have a filter. You can see it right here. It's a removable filter and during PMs you either vacuum them out or replace them depending on the hour count of the machine. And inside you can see the blower fan, just the rotor blades. So it sucks air from the room and it comes up through the filter into the blower where it then exits out through the tube. So here you can see the motor start or motor run capacitor. We have a couple cables here that I have to undo. There we go. All right. That one. We get this one. Get this one. And then we have the AC mains. All right. Well, that will give us a better idea of what's going on. So right here we have our power control board and it looks like it's also the main control board for the device. Unless there's one up here by the, the control panel. There's one single ribbon cable right here that comes down to the power board. And on the back of the power board, I'm actually seeing a mini IC, so it does look like it's not just a it's not just a power board. Uh, it looks like this guy here is also the control board. Makes it a little more expensive. So the AC comes in, the IEC input comes down here, plugs into this guy, and there is a very interesting thing here. I want you guys to take a look at. On the AC power board, you can see that it's got dual capability fuses. So L1 and L2 are fused, but at the same time, they have a very special type of fuse holder, so it can hold either the large cylindrical fuses or the smaller ones. And it's got some uh, secondary fuses. So it's got L1 and L2 fused, and then also look at these guys right here, these two black cylinders. Those are also fuses. And this guy's got uh, backup systems in place just as well. You know, you're dealing with temperature and patience. you got to make sure that if uh, there's any sort of voltage spikes or whatever, that this unit will go out of service. Because the last thing you want to do is run a unit at a higher than nominal temperature. You cook your patient almost literally. Right here is the alarm speaker. Uh, this right here is probably your fan power for the blower motor. And up here is where all the special sauce is. Okay, hidden behind this little piece of plastic right here. I think you guys can see it right there. I'm assuming that that is an NTC or a negative temperature coefficient. Uh, temperature probe and you can see as the air is blown through your resistive heater it goes past the temperature probe right here and it's detected here but also it looks like all right let's see if i can get that on video so take a look at this guy right here now this is a very special device it's got a set of contacts and they're bimetal contacts so as this guy heats up the contact will actually separate almost like a relay. So you can see this little black component right up here at the top and it acts like relay contacts and as they heat up it will separate and it automatically regulates the temperature of this guy right here. So it also has the temperature sensor right here which will help the computer figure out what it's doing. But this here is a mechanical method for adjusting and maintaining temperature. Very cool. So the fan looks like a typical AC fan. It's not, uh... yeah, it sure is. So the fan power comes from these two cables right here. Just a regular AC fan. 
Uh, the frequency of line voltage is what determines the, the speed of the fan, so it's constant velocity fan. It's got a couple weights on the, on the blades here. You can see this little black speck down here. That's a, it's a weight so that it's balanced out. Like I said, you have your uh, motor start, motor run capacitor. And right here, right here, you can see that they actually have a frame element inside the chassis to help so hold it to the pole. So it's not completely plastic that holds it on there. It does have a metal support inside, but that is not affixed. And you can see it's much, much smaller than the height of the unit. So the actual chassis itself is what cracks. You can see right here, crack made. And this guy, the one that I've been using as my cell phone prop, you can see what happens. The front of it explodes because somebody lowered a bed on it. Very typical. So guys, that is basically it for the inside of one of these forced air patient heaters. They're not very maintenance heavy, but almost all the maintenance for these devices is done by the OEM because of these blanket contracts that we have. I'm very surprised about that automatic temperature control right there. Now that component, you buy it based on the temperature, so it will release the contacts at a very set temperature. And obviously we don't change out any of these components, but it's nice to know how they function anyway. You can see my resistive element right there. And let's see, right there you can see my temperature sensor. Like I said, it's probably an NTC, which is negative temperature coefficient, which means as the temperature goes up, the uh, resistance value goes down. So that means your signal voltage, whatever the signal voltage is, let's say it's five volts, and at normal room temperature, it'll be, let's say, at 2.5 volts. And if you heat it up with a little heat gun, then your voltage will start to go up because the resistance will go down. All right? I hope that makes sense, guys. So as you put your meter on one of these to test and see if it's any good, you can find on the data sheet what the resistance value should be at room temperature. And if it's, let's say, it's 70 kilo ohms, then you put your meter on it, and if it's close to 70 kilo ohms, then you rub your fingers on the sensor. You should actually see the voltage go up if you're on like dial mode, or you see the resistance go down. So that is a negative temperature coefficient NTC temperature probe. You can see a guy hiding right there, protected. Now that's the Mistral air system. Now other systems like Bear Hugger have in the past had two temperature sensors and it measures the difference between those two temperature sensors and if there is any sort of difference beyond like one degree or whatever it is then they will throw error codes and it's such a pain in the butt guys so one of the brands I don't know which brand it is will have a temperature sensor at the exit of the patient hose and then we'll have another temperature sensor right here same as with this guy at the exit of the machine. So it measures the difference between those two points and if the difference is very good, then um, it will throw an error code. And those devices, and I do believe they're Bear Hugger brand, gave us all sorts of problems. Now these ones here have been uh, pretty reliable, but the biggest problem is you can see how far these two machines hang off of the pole. So there's one skinny little point right here where it holds on to the, the pole. And then if they put weight on it like that, they set something on top of it. I mean, look, at it looks like a shelf. So users just naturally want to put things on them. Or they wheel them right up next to a bed, and the bed will come down on the end of it and just crush it. It does happen. It happens actually almost daily. So that's a design flaw as well. Like I said, if they would have made it skinnier, and closer to the pole and taller, we wouldn't be having most of these problems, but it is what it is. Anyway guys, that is forced air patient heaters in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.